Hello guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video and today I would like to follow up on the video that I made uh, yesterday about the Sejuani and Fizz deck. That was a beta version but I actually went ahead and finalized the list and surprisingly enough I found quite a success on that over the past couple days and I'm very happy to share this deck with you guys now. The list feels very finalized, the cards I have there in there uh, I'm happy with, the deck runs pretty consistently and of course every now and then the do games do come down to some of the plunder effects kind of becoming relevant but without a doubt I did manage to pick up 11 wins and 5 losses holding a 68% win rate is no joke uh, the sample size obviously is small but I feel confident if I kept playing the deck I can produce similar uh similar uh ratios now I already did minus the one game with Heimerdinger control so please do ignore that but the deck the deck, I'm very happy with it, and I really want to share it with you guys. I think the, the video I put up yesterday was pretty average, so I do apologize for that, but I really wanted to follow up and bring you guys a deck that I'm confident with. Let's jump across and look at the cards, and let's guide you through how you yourself can take this deck to ladder and win some games. Thank you guys for the support. I will see you soon. All right, so first of all, I guess we should talk about the highlights of the deck. That is the fact that we are running both Fizz and Sejuani. The idea, uh, in a, to sum up this deck, the idea is that we abuse Fizz's early game to help us guide uh, comfortably and smoothly through to Sejuani by constantly hitting their Nexus and doing a bunch of stuff. So we do run heavy build water. We run lots of uh, cards that will allow us to hurt our opponent's Nexus and sometimes we'll just beat them down prior to when Sejuani comes down. I think the power of this deck may be because... Uh, uh, it is something that people aren't used to. That could be the reason why we are abusing the ladder, since, hence why I do enjoy crafting up decks. But I'm getting a little bit off track here, so let's go through the cards, okay? So top end, we'll start there. Sejuani, this is pretty much going to be where the game ends. Hopefully once we play Sejuani, uh, we just kind of run over our opponents. We have plenty of ways to activate her. She will basically frostbite the en uh, enemy's entire board if we had dealt damage to them for the first time every turn, either or, which is kind of useful on the defense as well. We have three copies of Citrus Courier. This fits into this deck because we do have plenty of ways to damage our opponent's Nexus and this can sometimes be a finisher as well. So we have Sejuani and Citrus Courier on the top end to kind of provide us with the game ending that we need because we're gonna, we're gonna get rolled over by some heavy Shadow Isles decks. So we have to be careful about that. Didn't run into any deep sea monsters. So I'd be curious to see how that matchup goes. But Citrus Courier could hopefully allow us to end games. Elusive Slippery Wayfinder. This card is low key. It's, it's low key strong. There's not many big elusive units. And this is one of the very few there is. It has elusive plus a tune. So we pretty much are paying four mana for a 4-4 with elusive, which is not too bad. This card is, it's okay. This is probably one of the more interesting flavors of the deck and probably could be adjusted a little bit more. But for now, it's putting in the work, plus it's elusive. It gives us an opportunity to attack prior to Sejuani so that when the uh, wave rider hits face, the Sejuani will proc the vulnerable and the frostbite. Well, the frostbite's the more relevant part. Uh, Zap Spray Fin, this card's pretty utility, all around useful. The elusive makes this card quite powerful and it provides us with some refill as we need because card draw is a little bit minimum on this deck. I like Zap Spray Fin, I think it's quite a powerful card. Is this one of those like auto include kind of cards in a deck that would feature like uh, any amount of spells really. Uh, Yoda Grifter makes its highlight in this deck. We are heavy in bilge water. I did that on purpose so I can guarantee getting that value from the Allegiance proc on Yoda Grifter. This card is just very valuable. It's a body behind Warning Shot. You would run this over Warning Shot. I do run Warning Shot as well, but this card is just kind of uh, achieving the value goal, I guess, in this deck. And this allows us to find more use out of it other than just running Warning Shot by itself. The Allegiance tends to proc quite consistently as well, which is really nice. And it just synergize. It's just very good auto include in this kind of deck. One copy of Sleight of Hand. It's kind of can be powerful in certain scenarios. We don't want to have too many of them. It's a bit clunky, but for now, I like having one copy of Sleight of Hand. It just has the ability to like shift some matchups. So it just provides, it, it this goes along with it. Like we're going to be hitting that plunder quite a lot. So the Sleight of Hand is a one of, I like it for now. I probably wouldn't include any more. It's more of the, it's more of a card that every now and then it's going to do something amazing. So I'll keep it for that scenario. Petty Officer feels like a bit of an auto include in, in uh, 
many of these uh, bilge water decks because the ability to summon a one cost ally is what makes this deck uh, card, sorry, very flexible. And most of the time I actually don't summon the keg, but the, the fact that Petty Officer allows you to choose makes it very relevant. I'm not running the two mana card in this deck that summons a keg just this one because of the fact that it summons an ally and every now and then I can use it to summon a keg alongside make it rain but make it rain is generally a pretty flexible card and so is petty officer so for that fact I run it as a three of and there's not many good three drops that we can get away with in this list uh, monkey idol this is probably one of the more interesting cards this card is low key been doing some crazy things plus every now and then if you hit that shared spoils buff on it you'll be able to get an extra monkey from it or force your opponent to deal with it which is essentially they're using removal into a 0-4 monkey that just summons more monkeys uh it helps us to consistently buff sedge and i've kind of focused this deck around making sure that we get sedge online by that turn um and also helps to enable plunder quite consistently like hitting plunders in this is very easy it's very easy so I like Monkey Idol. I think it's actually been putting in a lot of work and it should not be overlooked. And the card is a lot of fun. Uh, Shared Spoils are three of, kind of fits the plunder theme and it allows us to draw cards throughout our deck sometimes. And the buffs can be relevant. This is essentially like an Omen Hawk with plunder with card draw without the 1-1 one -one body. I like Shared Spoils. It's been doing what it needs to do. Uh, this card can maybe be shifted into, but I, I would like to still run two of this at minimum. I'm having three for now, just in terms of that consistency. Uh, buffing certain units can be quite useful as well, especially Sejuani. Uh, Pilfered Goods, this is a no-brainer. This card's pretty much like one of the powerful cards for Plunder. The burst speed's insane. Uh, playing this alongside, for example, Warning Shot, which I have been including two copies of. So I guess we'll talk about the whole early game package as a, as a in one sentence. Okay, so Pilfered Good, Warning Shot, Fizz, Jagged Butcher, Black Market, these cards are all insane for the early game. Like, it, it, it's, I just can't describe it. You have to see the games to really see the, see the power of these cards all together throughout the early game to see what they could possibly do. Like sometimes I find myself floating mana on turn one and then I, I lead into like a, a warning shot black market pilfer turn and that is just mental plus the uh, black market is reducing the cost of the pilfered cards plus the black market merchant itself gives you a pilfer card the ability to sometimes just tilt your opponent throughout the early game which you'll see in some of these games is just mental jagged butcher finds a home here um this is i have like a really important thing that i look for when i'm deck building it's like how do i deal with a rear guard sergeant from the burn aggros on turn one when they have the attack token Jagger Butcher does does just that, and you can sometimes find that value from buffing it. Uh, Fizz, I guess is the other card to look at here. So my initial impressions for when I was playing with Fizz was like, I need to protect Fizz, I need to high value Fizz. But no, I finally figured out that Fizz is just a very strong card. It's a very strong one drop, and it does synergize with the spells but you don't have to be too cautious when using Fizz in terms of protecting it if you don't think it's worth protecting it don't like if you're versing an aggro deck and they swing at you with a rear guard sergeant which is another reason why i like fizz because it has two attack then you just block that rear guard sergeant without a doubt but in certain matchups like it can be quite useful as well it can help buy time and against karma ezreal this card is low-key annoying as heck for them because they just can't seem to target it so I like Fizz in the end. At the end of the day, Sejuani is our win condition. Citrus Coria, as well as just having an aggressive strategy, is our win condition. Uh, the Black Market Merchant, this whole package, as I just talked about, just really fits this early game, gives us stuff to do. And against aggro decks, you can be pulling some very cheap cards, which can help you stabilize. So I found that this deck has been performing well against the aggro decks. It's been performing, performing well against Karma Ezreal. It's been performing... Uh, well against most of the meta decks i guess i will say so that's where i feel like this deck found a lot of stride today and yesterday on the ladder anyway i won't ramble on too much so i go hope you guys can enjoy these games it's going to be a big video okay to make up for the one that we had yesterday so you know enjoy if you make it to the end i applaud you <laughs> but uh i will see you guys soon enjoy have a great day
to go hard Bulligan for the Fizz. It's going to be quite useful against Ezreal. Unless I find a warning shot, I will not play Fizz turn one. Because it's going to be actually quite important for him to be kind of frustrated at having no targets. And because he is calm as rule, he has less of a board. I'll flip my mana for now. Hmm. A little bit of an awkward hand. Guess I'll play the monkey idol. Just a target for him to use stomach beam on. Like, does he really want to use dynamic beams against monkeys? Yeah, I still get one. That's okay. Ooh, pretty insane find. Static Shock. He's going to allow my Plunder cards to be activated. Play this while he can't get any value from denying it. Will of Ionia. Guess it's time to play Fizz. Does he have a way to protect this? He can retreat it, right? No retreat. We'll bring peace to Ionia, whatever the cost. I was actually send it back to the hand. I'm not a big fan of random card generation. Am I playing too much minions to the field? I don't think so. I think I'm supposed to still develop. Rear guard sergeant. That's pretty insane. Okay, we still get one attack through. I have to play aggressive.
He's dropping that 3 2 close to the dragon, right? I need to connect some face damage, and I hope he hasn't got a stun. It's about a about a rally. Okay. This rally is going to be really strong. See what I can. St oh, hang on. He has no mana left. I'll do better this time. So if I just grant Fury of the North to here, game should be over. Act with conviction. <laughs> wow. Oh, there he is. This time I'm probably not going to get as lucky. Why make it rain to save the fizz? I'll share it spoils. I don't really care about the card draw, but this is a decent value. Them and be sure. Buffed up monkey idol. That's pretty cool. Let's do that. What's it do for three mana to deal with this? You can dwindle it down with like a gotcha or something. Open attack. Probably go for a black market into pilfered goods. He must be sitting on a sitting on a pretty expensive hand. The way he just passes the turns immediately. Sure. Still plunder, right? Treasures of the ages for a price. I wonder if the butcher's better here. Probably not. We'll take the good value off the uh, black market merchant in this matchup. You weren't using it. I would have hoped to have find some more valuable cards there. Make it rain.
Good fine. Let's use that static shock that we found. Sure. Good find. Should I be playing monkey idols? We should push some damage now. Random one cost ally probably gets a little bit more done here. There my beam. Oh, spiders. This blocks, this blocks, this blocks. I should still attack though. We don't get plunder. Not for the plunder poro, so plunder is a played ability. The only trick is if you play the card. Unfortunately. Well, actually, no, clarify that. I don't think we actually plundered this turn. It may have worked, it should have worked. Chooses to keep the Elise intact. This is kind of interesting. What do you suppose he's gonna do with the Vi? Gonna swing into the black market merchant. Or maybe he wants to sweep, swing into the petty officer. Let's see what he does here. I should play Skidder. I still have mana for Grasp. He may choose to uh, grab hold of the Frenzy Skidder with the Vi. We could use a bite. Mm. I'll just chill for now. The grass isn't actually going to kill it, so it's not really effective. Play the monkey idol. And we'll play Fizz as well. Hopefully we find a cheap activator for Fizz. That'll do it. He's not sitting on a... mana for ruination so this warning shot's actually pretty relevant swing with everything I'll see what he does with his mana before I decide what to play. Probably not going to use grass though, so it's probably going to be a pilfered goods. Thermo beam. It's pretty interesting. Wonder what the reductions mean for that. Probably made a mistake not leveling up Fizz immediately, but I wanted to keep my options open. I could have pushed one extra damage. Should I play Jacket Butcher? Probably 
final yet. I think we have enough pressure on board. We're going to have activators for plunder this turn anyway. The powder monkeys have been putting in work for uh, consistently. All right, so here's an important turn of what we decide to do. Do I just ruinate this board? <sighs> You'd be playing into Karina next turn. If I ruinate this, this feels really bad. He's gonna rip the fizz. I don't think we ruin H ruination this turn. I don't think I can just drop the thermo beam. It's very awkward. Very awkward turn. I can mystic shot the Elise first of all. I'm gonna mystic shot the Elise. You're gonna rip the fizz up. We're not going to activate plunder this turn, actually. I guess we're clearing up the lead dross. Ten redeemed hydrate. Thanks, buddy. He played the other lead Ross too. He blocks four. I leave him on two. My main concern is the fact that he'll be floating the mana, right? So he'll be able to play Lidros alongside 
something. Actually, they've been cutting, get excited. Does this cut me down to three or two? Cuts me down to two. That's fucking crazy. I have one opportunity to play Zap Sprayfin and maybe find the other warning shot. But I think I already played it. Make it rain works. Actually, I win the stack now. I have the potential to win stacks. Am I supposed to play it now? It can't be correct. I have to pass until he attempts to go for a stack game. So. This is very weird. Yep, that works. We win. Could I BM him? No, we win. Warning shot. Boom! Work. I was mucking around with the stuff yesterday. I have to go recheck it. Actually, no. I got it. I got you, fam. Mm. Although, I do appreciate it. Welcome to the Ninja Heroes Club. Oh, come on, come on. Be sure to check the Discord. I will have you updated appropriately. The Viz is a big bait too, by the way. You should probably just not block into it. You should prioritize his units more. Yeah, thanks again, man. I do appreciate that. Enjoy your founder tag. That looks amazing. Let me show you what I can do. God, that's so awkward. I can't really make a rain into that, can I? I would like to pilfer against him though. What states are a bit important in this matchup? So I'll float one mana. What do I have more? I guess this is probably just a better priority to keep. You couldn't let Cheese have one and not me. I guess so. I'm not sure how many of the founders go out, but I do appreciate that. <laughs> Enjoy the emote. <laughs> we'll be close to getting our second one soon. At this rate. I think I just make it rain. I think it's 50. I think I get another... Um, Emote unlock at 15, 15 um, subscriber points. That's from what I understand. Another thing, I do appreciate you guys popping into my stream. I know it's late at night. I saw this coming a mile away. You know, it makes me wonder, uh, I'm not gonna ask everybody's personal information, but it might be interesting to find out where majority of my viewers are from and what time it is because I might have to adjust my schedule to, you know, match the comfortability of you guys. These are my favorite hours to watch streamers. Okay then. LA. What time is it in LA right now? I know you and Cheese is about one hour difference. Plundering from the aggro decks insane too. We find some pretty nuts tools. 12 a.m. It's 
Citrus Courier. That's going to be strong for the heal. Let's make it deep. Cask Salesman. What does that mean for us? It means I should probably just play Boom Crew Rookie. I can do this. Utah, 1 a.m. Right, I shouldn't forget that. We got LA, we got Utah, 12 a.m., 1 a.m. Cheesy says it's his favorite time to watch streamers. No one's the wiser. Uh, what's he doing here? He's swinging in with 2 1. He may just not even swing this turn. We'll have to wait and see. I'll block with Fizz and Boom Crew. Uh, Boom Crew is a pretty nutty uh, enabler for plunder. They'll never see it coming. Hands off the merch. Why are you swinging with that? Well, I didn't do anything. This is a mistake him swinging with this, by the way. You'll see why in a moment. He's going to activate my plunder. Maybe split up the streams and experiment with different hours to see what works best. All right. Oh, wait, no. Does plunder not work like the way I thought it does? A card triggers its plunder ability when played if you damage the enemy nexus. Fair enough. I should probably just play the butcher here as a 2-2. Our board state is quite powerful at that point. Of course, it would be nice to get the um, value from it, but we're actually the aggressor here. We can catch him on the open attack. I should have maybe played this. I could just find lethal damage from his deck. I mean, what's his best play? Decimate. Be right back. No worries. We get the reductions on the cards too. Let's find some lethal, please. It doesn't help us find lethal immediately. I should have played something to the board here. We might lose now. I'd hate to see map double get excited. I'd be so disappointed because I really even decimate plus mystic shot works as well. I feel like we were like oh, so close to winning this game that it was just the slightest of misplays. I should have developed a stronger board and pushed more face damage. Citrus Courier should get us over the hump though. There's nothing to consider here. If he has double get excited, it's 100% to play. Rally. Yeah, we're rallying. Oh, we win. GG. Unless he has a reduction on Mystic Shot for some reason. Come up with the Shen. Thanks for popping off for me today. Welcome back. What time is it? Uh, right now it is 5.15 p.m. So usually the hour difference uh, in Australia compared to the USA, it's approximately 15 hours on average. And I'll be ahead of you guys. So right now, you guys have just rolled over into Monday. It's late Monday for me. Uh, what are we versing? Perhaps... Ooh, we're versing something interesting. For draw Piltover... Fly and Sedge. Huh. I guess I'll look for the early game. Hawk. Oh 
I won't block for the chance that we top deck into warning shot. Warning shot, as I said, low key puts in value. Uh... I'll pass for now. I'll see what he does here. He may develop a minion, which makes uh, make it rain slightly better. Of course I'm ready. Okay, that feels kind of bad. But I guess we should still play it. Elixir of Island would suck. Should I prematurely play the Black Market Merchant? Because I'm most likely going to play Yordle Griff the next turn. I lose one draw, but I reduce the ones that I steal from him. Actually, it doesn't work the way I thought it did. We don't have enough mana for doing that. What deck is this guy running? He's got Vi and Sejuani. That's actually a pretty insane find. I don't need to necessarily use the warning shot just yet though. Okay. So what's on my priority list? Would it be drawing cards from his deck or drawing cards from my deck granting them buffs? I think while we have the black market merchant, there's slightly more value from pilfering goods. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you very much. Okay, so he's rocking Ursine Spirit Claw, uh, Spirit Walker, sorry, hey? Is there a cheap way I can plunder against him? I should be taking blocks, right? Or did I take one damage? Hmm. No. We've already got decent value from Black Market Merchant. One HP matters. Yep. These mid-range threats are going to be hard for me to deal with, so... In saying that... I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this. We're going to warning shot though 100% this turn. And also play our Spirit Walker. I'm curious if he's cutting cards like Frostbite. I would have to hope so. Where's the city at? It is a 2-5, so he only just drew into it. Oh boy. I feel like I have to swing with this. I feel like I have to swing with this. At that point, do I just swing with this too? We just full swing. I want to climb, but I don't want to run into you on ladder. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. He values the value block. Okay. I guess he kind of feels like he hasn't got enough value left in his hand to justify blocking this, so he doesn't know what I'm playing, clearly. He could be opening... He could have the Sejuani, actually. 
He's in a position where he can get away with the value block though. Unfortunately, I can't. If you run into me, just uh, just uh, get good. Sejuani is backbreaker. And it just grants me vulnerable. Ah, son of a gun. So he's going to grab the... Damn it, need to find Sejuani there, desperately. Okay, if he can't... Deal with the elusive unit, we might have a chance here. <laughs> I think we got him. You'll fight or you'll swim. Oh, another warning shot to the fucking face. <laughs> ah! Unbelievable. That's the second time today I've just warning shot someone in the face, dude. A little bit close to the game. Perhaps we got a little bit unlucky. But we probably could have played that better. I think that turn where we played pack mentality was a mistake. I want to see me spend some resources before I play Pilfered Goods, if I get a chance to. Okay. I, uh, made it myself. I'm on a random one cost follower. I never disclose my sources. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play this. Oof. We don't need to hold on to the black market merchant. That was just insane. You that was a fucking random ass turn. Talk about high rolling. Is that our fleeted card? Okay. It's not a bad find. You be warned. Sure. I'm willing to commit and make it rain on this turn. 
gets the buffs onto Sejuani. No more value other than that. Makes for a decent open attack. I like Petty Officer. I like Kegs. He could also play TF if I do that though. What's that look like if he does that? Looks like a pretty heavy commitment. So I should go for the keg here. Timo Katarina. Am I supposed to keep both Jagger Butcher and Fizz? Oh, probably. It's playing a bit of an early game. Do I open with? We open with Fizz. He obviously doesn't want to block with his Timo, so this should be fine. Rear guard sergeant Timo Katarina, okay. Interesting. Just need a second. Hmm. Nothing like a stink of blood and sweat. I'm down with blocking the rear guard sergeants. Oh, great find. I was going to say I was needed something to curve into his turn because I would hate to come back into his turn. Oh, what the heck? We got the challenger from that. It's insane. Never what happens if I hit Katarina? Wait. Am I supposed to hit that? Yeah, I am. What an insane find, getting the Fleetwood Tracker. He can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, high roll. Fuck, I need this coffee to kick in, guys. I just feel like... Yucky. Back to Platinum 3, once again. I'm in autopilot mode, where I just want to win games. Yet, uh, I still decide to play decks like Fizz, Sejuani, Plunder. How did we win? <laughs> he just had a bad hand. He was experimenting with a deck, obviously, Timo Katarina, which was an aggressive deck, and everything just lined up well for us. Like, he played double rear guard. I was able to block it with Fizz, because I didn't care about the value too much. We also had a... the Plunder unit. Just all the... everything lined up perfectly. 
He played Katarina on turn three. I summoned a Fleetwood Tracker from a Petty Officer, which also gave it the Challenger, which I could challenge the Katarina into. It was just disgusting. Um, accidentally, I didn't accidentally, but I don't know why I didn't concentrate too much. I wasn't focusing, but I wasn't meant to keep two fizzes there. That's a mistake. Low key, warning shots being put in work too. Provides some pretty insane value. Um, should I be chilling? Who are we playing against? Karina. Uh, we can't be the ones chilling. If I was to say play warning shot and merchant, that should just be correct most of the time. Even if we lose fizz. Right now, he'd need the gotcha to be on a reduction, which he obviously doesn't have. He may have one in hand, though. So, at this point, we should just open attack. I can save the Fizz. Just barely save it. Oof. Okay, unless he has a reduction on gotcha, this Fizz attack should go through. And that wouldn't actually help Shared Spoils. So I should probably be shared spoils. It's not a matchup where we're going to win into the late game. So I need to put in the work now. If Fizz dies, we have another copy. I'll actually deny the static shock though, for sure. I'm actually making people rage quit. How annoying. Hmm. Maybe I'll chill for now. Mm, nah. Not bad. We might get baited into taking down Fizz. Yeah. And he might even drop a Thermo Beam at the same time. And that'll be fine. Random one cost ally. Probably to see auto grifter. Flash of brilliance. Attack with everything. He'll block the fizz. That's fine. We'll hold on to the warning shot for buffing Sedge. Sure. You can't really play Harmendinger safely this turn. Well, you just tank the 4 damage, right? We'll just open up with a warning shot. This could activate Merchant. Hmm. Yeah. If he plays Harmendinger this turn... 
It's okay. It's not really getting much value from it. Let's do this, see what he does. You ask, but do not see if I must. On go below four mana. You know you want to play cards. You must be sitting on a deny. Okay. Let's say I play gotcha right now against Heimerdinger. He will deny leaving him at one mana. We have 10, that's four down. I'll just get some reductions on cards from his deck. We missed the allegiance buff. It means Sejuani is probably a top deck or spoiled, she had spoils. The elusive. Okay. Master. It's got a warning shot. You know you want to play cards, man. Am I playing too passive by not using gotcha right now? This actually gives me mana back. This gives me more mana if I play this now. That's actually pretty crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, he's probably got deny. I 
I feel like he's, he's playing like he's got Denier. Ten redeemed to hydrate. Sure thing, buddy. Thank you. Maybe I should have floated that mana there. Got my Valorant drop yesterday. Congratulations. Let's play pack mentality that we got. We already stole one of his deniers. Does he run three deniers? I don't think so. He can burst spell to get another minion onto Phil. I mean, he's probably sitting on a thermo, thermo beam, which is quite awkward for him to use. Will into that. Sure. So Vi blocks into one of the four fours, hundred percent. This blocks one of the four fours. I mean you can't not block. That works. If I had one more mana, that wouldn't have mattered actually. I feel like we're just dead here. That turn that we played pack mentality was probably a mistake. Him swinging with the uh, I'm winning it does make a difference. I gotta hope that these land where they need to land. They 
find it, okay? Like, that's all my answers. See if I get punished for not blocking the 4 1. I got greedy blocking the Heimerdinger. Couple of twin disciplines, and he gets lethal, although I stole some of his. Does he have the mystic shot? Apparently not. Okay, so assuming that he has no mystic shot in hand and no deny, the other problem is I need to hold mana for deny, and I also need to kill him this turn. So it would seem that Sejuani is the best way to go, and to give vulnerable to one of the weaker targets. This is it. Okay, he would have gone for the lethal if he had it. I'm going to deny this and hope that works. 